Before you enjoy this video, why not consider signing up for an account at PAX? Whether you're a player, agent, club, or scout, PAX is for you. Create your free profile and connect with those in the industry today. For more information, please visit us at www.paxsports.com. That's www.paxsports.com. Now, please go ahead and enjoy our video presentation. All right, guys, welcome to Next Gen Rugger. So I've got quite a few messages and specifically emails from you guys uh, regarding the amount of content I'm coming out with lately. And instead of answering everyone individually, um, basically, I just thought I'd give you guys a quick update on why this is happening. Um, look, the whole thing is, is that a lot of these youngsters aren't going to be getting the exposure that they normally would because of the rugby season being delayed, or we don't know, guys, maybe even cancelled. I don't know what's going to happen with 2020. I mean, we're going into level four lockdown um, pretty soon, but uh, besides that, I mean, th there's just not much knowledge out there, guys. We don't know what's going to happen uh, regarding social gathering and sports events and everything. So until we absolutely know for certain... I'm not stopping. I'm going to give as many young guys opportunity as I possibly can to get some exposure. Um, and another thing you guys asked for was, um, which is the topic of this video, um, sort of getting some exposure for guys from smaller schools. So what we're going to be looking at today is um, 12 players from smaller schools just to keep an eye on. And um, th this is not the, the last time I'll do this, guys. Um, what you need to do is you need to keep up to date on the community tab, right? So when you go into the channel, click on community. Sometimes I'll ask you guys questions there um, and get some feedback on videos and all the rest of it. Um, but it seems obviously the videos are much more effective in um, getting responses from people. So if you can think of any other small school player, small school players um, to mention, now don't don't give me guys from Grey High and Selborne and um, Uffies and schools like that, guys. I mean, <laughs> you know, th th those aren't small schools. Um, so I'm looking for guys from sort of rural schools, from smaller towns, that type of thing that you've got some talent and think might need some exposure. Um, so I'm willing to do a good couple of these videos, especially because the guys in the smaller towns um, don't have school sports live and digi tv you know fantastic services like that to record their games so they're missing the footage but they might have the the talent so anyone you can think of just leave the name down in the comment section below tell them to get in touch with me via instagram like i said this won't be the last time i'll make a video like this um, this is just the sort of opening sort of video in what who knows this could become a series and also guys the guys have to be in grade 12 I think in grade 11, grade 10, you've still got a chance to uh, get some exposure. Um, but this year is very special circumstances. So please, guys, only people in grade 12 from smaller schools. But let's focus and uh, get to the list at hand. So let's start off with Cabello Mkize. He's from Hillcrest High, 120 kilograms, 183 centimeters as a prop. This guy I'm a huge fan of. I mean, uh, how I found out about Cabello was uh, he sent me a, a message on Instagram and he basically said, hey man, you know, you're only focusing on the bigger schools, there's some other talent out there. So I'm like, well, show me some other talent out there. So he sent me a clip of himself absolutely running through the whole back line as a prop. It was an absolutely beautiful thing to see. And um, yeah, I put the video up on Instagram and it got over 20,000 views. So yeah, I did my part there. And um, I still think he deserves exposure on this list because he really is a talented player. I've been watching some of his videos. I mean, very athletic for prop guys. And he's been in first team since grade 10. And he's been the first team captain in grade 11 and grade, uh, grade 12. Now, he just bounces plays for fun. And you must see the stepping. You don't believe a prop can actually sidestep like this, but he's got it. Um, I, I don't think I've seen at school level someone with his speed and agility, like someone his size. I just, you don't see it. Um, and also what I like about him is he plays with instinct and you can see he's a natural leader. His team looked to, uh, look to him for guidance. Also rock solid on defense. He does the work, guys. You know, a lot of props um, that do have that bit of athleticism like to just hang around in the back line the whole time. But what I like about Cabello is that in the footage I have seen of him, he really does get stuck in. But he can be a very, very devastating um, runner when, he's, uh, when he joins the back. 
Um, and also the front of a pod, absolutely fantastic. Um, in terms of his playing style, I really much see him as like an Audi Sevilla, but a prop. I know it sounds strange, but you guys just have to watch his uh, footage. So check him out on Instagram, Kabelum Kize. Um, and you'll see some of his footage and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Fantastic young talent, this guy. Second up, we have Sadile Lassi. Um, so he's from Newcastle High, 64 kilograms, 176 centimeters. Um, he's a utility back. Um, very, very quick guys. Very, very fast runner, this guy. I've also seen some of his footage. I mean, pace to burn. Um, he was part of the uh, NKZN under 16 and under 18 teams. Um, I think... Without a doubt, one of the quickest players in his league. Um, very, very good on the counter attack. Very dangerous. Um, and very much an attack focused player. So what I like about him is that when he gets a ball, he does doesn't kick away uh, kick away in a sort of a tense situation. He always will look for the uh, for the attacking opportunity, no matter what the circumstances. He's always looking to attack, and he also reads the game extremely well. Very mature um, player, and um, you know he always has a habit of turning up at the right time at the right place so to speak and i mean that only comes from reading like having the natural ability to read the game and in terms of like his playing style i, I think he can play pretty much anywhere along the back line and uh, that's why i'd really compare him to someone like dylan lades next up we have Matthias lowe so uh, he's from Nico Milan, 102 kgs, uh, 202 centimeters tall and obviously he's a lock i mean that size you're a lock now Mateus is another guy that got in touch with me via Instagram and, um, you know, basically talking about how he wanted to get exposure and, um, you know, he's looking to grow and develop in the game and all the rest of it. So obviously, you know, I contacted one or two people to ask him about this guy and it turns out his father is a high flyer in the world of rugby. And what I really respect about this youngster is that he never mentioned his old man once. Not once did he mention his old man. Everything was about him. And when I asked him about uh, the old man, he said, yeah, well, you know, he's got his life. I've got my life. I want to make my own, uh, you know, my own path. And I really respect it. And from what I've seen of him, I've seen a couple of his games. I mean, he's a like a proper enforcer, guys. Massive talent, this guy. So he's been part of the Nicomelan first team squad for the last two years. Um, was also in the EP elite uh, squad. Definitely, you would have walked into the Craven Week team this year. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I mean, a, a very much a line out general. I mean, obviously, the fact that he's over two meters tall doesn't really hurt his cause. Um, very, very good in the carry. Uh, excellent in the support play. Um, and what I like is um, he likes the physical side of the game, but he doesn't play dirty. So I would compare him to Bucky's Boerta, but let's just say like a, a cleaner Bucky's Boerta, so to speak. Next up, we have Fernan Oranser. So he's from Hurskul, Swartland, 117 kgs, 183 centimeters. And uh, yeah, with that size, he's a prop every day. And he's a tank, guys. Very, very strong guy, this. He played Craven Week for Boerland at under 17 level. And for the last two years, he's been part of the South African Elite Player Development Squad. Um, so he's a machine in the scrums, guys. I mean, he doesn't stand back for anyone. Very, very good on the defense. And he's very well known for driving his opposition back in his tackle. I mean, that's almost like his trademark. Very, very good balls, carrying skills for front ranker. And I think if he was at a bigger school, a lot more people would know about him and a lot more people would be talking about him. But definitely a big talent for the future. Then we have Jared Nicholas. Um, and he's from Cliff, 79 kgs, 186 centimeters. And he's a fly off. And, you know, I've spoken to a few people about this guy, very much a hidden gem. Um, those in the know say that he's absolutely devastating. One of the most underrated prospects in the KZN area. He reads the game with the maturity way beyond his years. And the way that he controls the flow of the game and gets his backline moving is majestic. Very, very good playmaker, always putting those outside of him into space. And apparently the offloads are something that really does need to be seen in, in order to be believed. Uh, very steady and reliable boot, very good tactical kicker, all the weapons that basically is needed in a fly-off this guy has. So really looking forward to seeing his development and hopefully we can get a bit more footage of him because I'd love to do a highlights reel of this youngster. Then we move on to our next player, Onyi John Osun Kuo. I hope I got that right, buddy. <laughs> so he's from Northwood, 90 kgs, 186 centimeters and a wing. He's got searing pace, but with the physicality to match it. So the bus is always full when it comes to this guy. Uh, he, his, hands off, his hand-offs are just like completely unreal, guys. 
Now, what I like about him is when he hits the line, he hits it with speed and intensity. I mean, he plays with a real fire in his belly. And this guy's just got unbelievable upper body strength, guys. I mean, when he runs into op opposition, they're basically running into trouble. And he, you can see it. I mean, he just bounces plays for fun. The way I would look at him is very much like a, a Palele Fussy, but with a lot more brawn, a lot more physicality, and a lot more power. So I think he's got a big future in the game. I mean, that's for sure. Next player we move on to is Tarek Smith. So he's at Amanis, and Amanis have got a habit of producing some high-quality players. I mean, they've produced a good couple of SA Schools players in recent times, and I think he would have been in the mix this year, no doubt. I mean, he's a giant, 110 kgs, 203 centimeters, obviously a lock with that build. Um, and the way I describe him is a line-out general with strength and size in equal parts. I do remember him, and you guys should remember him as well, from last year's World Schools Festival. Definitely not afraid to mix it up with anyone. Um, so he's an EPD player, which means he's part of the Soru's Elite uh, Player Development uh, Squad. And f being from a small school, it just shows the level of talent. I mean, when you think of uh, the guys that have come from uh, Amonis in the last couple of years that have been part of the EPD, they've been extremely talented players. So this is another guy in that sort of assembly line. Um, in, in terms of his uh, line art skills, I think he's one of the top operators in the province or the state, guys. I mean, ball carrying ability is excellent. So the whole thing is, could we be seeing a future Yebenetsa Beth here? Don't bet against it. Next up, we have Quinton Olafir, and he's from Transvalia, 105 kgs, 197 centimeters, and he operates as a lock and a loose forward. Now, I would say it was about February, someone named Herman sent me an email. Now, I get a lot of emails telling me to look for a lot of players, but I mean, this email really hit home because he had all this car's stats available. I mean, every single stat you can think of available. And I've been very busy with other, you know, personal business, obviously, because of this corona stuff. And I've been a hell of a busy with uh, making videos and all the rest of it. So, you know, I'll get back to the emails when I can. But this email was always at the back of my mind. So I got in touch with him, learned a little bit about him, watched some of his footage. And uh, very, very versatile forward, guys. Uh, I mean, very, very physical as well. And, um, you know, a, a sort of a work rate that you don't see in many players with this much versatility. Um, he's been a Falcons player from youth level, but unfortunately missed Craven Week due to injury last year. So he would have no doubt made the Craven Week team last year as an under-17. Um, you know, he started as a lock, but he's been working very hard in the gym. And uh, it just something's just happened, a growth spurt or something, and I mean, his strength and speed has just gone to the next level. So he's done a sort of a transition to become more of a Lucy now. Um, like I said, very high work rate and uh, known for disrupting the opposition to breakdown. Apparently an absolute menace at the breakdown and very much loves the physical side of the game. And uh, I don't know, if you look at the versatility, you look at the build, I'll even take a look at him, you know, like his appearance. I mean, could we have another Peter Steftatoy here? Remember, Peter Steftatoy went to Swatland, guys. Uh, not the biggest rugby school in the world. And uh, Transvalia, obviously not the biggest rugby school in the world. Proud rugby school, but not like the biggest, you know, one of the big names you'd be associated with. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, he's got all the ingredients, right, to become that sort of player in terms of the build, in terms of his background. So definitely looking forward to see how he develops in the near future. Next up, we have Ndumiso Dulda, and I hope I got that right as well. So he's a Petra Tiff, 80 kgs, 175 centimeters. He operates in the wing and uh, very much a fan favorite at Petra Tiff, guys. I mean, this guy has got all the attributes to achieve big things in the game. Um, so he's played provincial level for all age groups. I think in um, junior Craven Week and a 13, he was at the Shocks, and then he's moved on to the Pumas. Uh, very much a hidden gem, guys. Only the top scouts are aware of our talent to this kid is. Now, I've got a lot of scouts that I talk to. I'd say two to three of those scouts uh, are probably like, we, we're talking about scouts that know more about school rugby than any of us will ever know. And they know about him. Some of the more casual scouts don't know about him, but this guy's a hidden gem. Absolute monster in defense, and he runs harder and with focus at his opposition. Um, in terms of his strengths, vision, and the reading of the game, but most of all, he's an absolute lethal finisher, guys. He just scores tries for fun, so great future ahead for this kid. Then we move on to Roland Fasaghi. So he's at Wismut, uh, 71 kgs, 176 centimeters. He's a center. Very, very quick player and loves to open up play. 
And this is just another hidden gem that's out there, guys. I mean, you know, a lot of these guys, if they went to much bigger schools, we'd know about them. So that's why I'm glad I'm doing these type of uh, uh, videos now. And what he has is an ability to create game-changing opportunities out of nothing. And he was another guy that was part of the EPD camps. And don't let his size deceive you. He's very, very strong and doesn't let anyone get past him easily. But it's, you know, his speed and his finishing and his overall vision and reading of the game is just way up there. I mean, this guy would have had to have been in contention for Craven Week and even SA Schools this year. Very, very good player. And uh, I think... Uh, I think, you know, my personal opinion does not fact. I'm just thinking that when he leaves school, I'm thinking more uh, playing along the wing, maybe even trying to train him at scrum off. I don't know, but I, I definitely think this guy could become a pocket rocket and a very special player in the future. Then we move on to Zane Bester, and uh, he's a gym for sheer 77 kgs, 176 centimeters, and operates as a center. I really, really like this kid as a player, guys. Like I say, the dynamite comes in small packages, and he's a proper honey badger. I mean, you underestimate him at your peril. This guy, once he's got you, he's not letting go. His pace off the mark, probably one of the best at this level. I mean, just off the mark, absolutely devastating. And I think we can agree that he was a born leader. I mean, he's captained his first team for two consecutive season seasons, and what I like about him is that he runs with purpose, um, he even bounces plays twice his size, guys. I mean, it, this really is like a kid dynamite situation over here. Very exciting player. And uh, holds the line very well. Very strong defender. And I think Zayn is someone with a very, very big future in the game if he can continue after school. Um, I, I like his attitude. He's a humble youngster. Um, and, uh, you know, I think he's got the personal characteristics as well as a work ethic to go far in this game. I really, really do believe that. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely be watching his career very closely. And then we have last but not least, Justin Dritzache. So he's at Randberg, 149 kg, 170 centimeters and a prop. So look, the thing is, this guy's just got so much heart, guys. Um, so basically how Justin came about on this list, because look, he's not playing first team at the moment, right? But I've got no doubt he can eventually get there. But I've been watching uh, watching on uh, Instagram for a while. I mean, he got in touch with me um, a while back and he said to me, you know what, one day I'm going to be a professional rugby player. And, uh, you know, most guys send uh, send me video clips and they say, feature me, do a highlights reel of me, do this, do that, do this. This guy just said, hey, watch, one day I'm going to become a pro rugby player. And, uh, you know, we started talking a bit, he started going over his goals and uh, gave me a bit of his life story, which I won't go into too much detail, but he's had, he's had some tough times, guys. He's a lot to deal with in his life, and uh, what I like about him is his attitude, and I felt that because of his attitude, he deserved a very special mention. Now, right now, like I say, he's rotating between second and third team, but it's not only about focusing on the stars, guys. It's also focusing on about those that have got inspiring stories. I mean, this guy's at the gym all the time. He's training, he's trying to surround himself with the right people, he's trying to make good uh, you know, decisions in terms of his health, in terms of his rugby. Uh, got a real passion for this game, guys, a real passion for this game, and he's a fantastic young player. And um, you know, I just thought I'd give him a special mention, and uh, Justin, we will be watching you very carefully in the future, my man, and we, uh, we really, really do hope that you achieve all your goals and you continue on the path uh, that you set forward. And, um, you know, who knows how far this thing can go. You know, don't let anyone ever crap all over your dreams. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that will put you down, tell you that you aren't good enough and all the rest of it. But, um, you know, you've got to flip them off and you've got to do your own thing. Just do the work. It'd be so good that nobody can not notice you. So, yeah, good luck. And, uh, yeah. That's basically the last play on the list, guys. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you.